Hello, welcome to an introduction to sensors presented to you by the Support Center for Microsystems Education. This presentation will define sensors, discuss the different types of sensors, and explain the difference between sensors and microsensors. A sensor is a device that receives and responds to a signal. This signal must be produced by some type of energy such as heat, light, motion, or chemical reaction. Once a sensor detects one or more of these input signals, it converts it into an analog or digital representation of the input signal. Based on this explanation of a sensor, you can see that sensors are used in all aspects of life to detect and or measure many different conditions. Can you think of some examples of different sensors that you're familiar with or use on a daily basis? Humans are equipped with five different senses. Our eyes sense light, our ears detect sound, our nose and mouth detect the presence of chemicals and distinguish between different types. Our sense of touch detects pressure and temperature. Senses detect the presence of energies as well as changes in or the transfer of energies. Senses detect by receiving a signal from a device such as a transducer then responding to that signal by converting it into an output that can easily be read and understood. Typically, sensors convert a recognized signal into an electrical, analog, or digital output that is readable. In other words, the sensor takes the output of the transducer and converts it to a readable format. This diagram is a schematic of how an oven's temperature sensor works. The oven is initially programmed with a set point, in this case, 350 degrees, which turns on the heating element. As the oven heats up, the oven's thermocouple converts the temperature of the oven to a voltage. This voltage is read by the sensor's electronic circuitry. The sensor compares the set point with the thermocouple output. If the thermocouple output is less than the set point, the sensor provides an output that keeps the heating elements on and that displays the actual temperature. Once the set point and the actual temperature is sensed by the thermocouple match, then the heating element is turned off. There are many different types of sensors. Thermosensors are devices that measure hot and cold. Thermosensors use some type of transducer that converts temperature or heat to another form of energy. For example, a thermometer like the one you use to take your body temperature measures absolute temperatures. Temperatures relative to absolute zero. The thermometer in the picture is an infrared thermometer that can sense body temperature without making contact with the body. These thermometers work using a phenomenon called black body radiation. Any object at a temperature above absolute zero has molecules inside moving around. The higher the temperature, the faster the molecules move. As they move, the molecules emit infrared radiation a type of electromagnetic radiation below the visible spectrum of light. As the object gets hotter, it emits more infrared radiation. An infrared thermometer measures the amount of radiation, converts it to temperature, and provides a readout. Other thermosensors include thermocouple gauges, which use thermocouples to measure temperature, and RTDs, or resistance temperature detectors. RTDs are cold wires that exhibit a change in resistance when the temperature of the wire changes. RTD sensors monitor the resistance change and outputs a reading of the effective temperature. Another type of sensor is the mechanical sensor. Mechanical sensors use movement of some type to sense a specific parameter such as pressure, the flow rate of a fluid, or acceleration. An example is the anode barometer shown here. An anode barometer senses changes in atmospheric pressure by the expansion or compression of an anode capsule, a thin disc-shaped capsule, usually metallic and partially evacuated of gas. An external spring is connected to the capsule and a needle is mechanically linked to the spring. As the pressure on the outside of the capsule increases, the capsule compresses, causing the spring to move the needle, indicating an increase in barometric pressure. As the pressure drops, the capsule expands and the spring moves in the opposite direction, 
moving the needle to show a decrease in barometric pressure. Other types of mechanical sensors include the pressure sensor, which measures pressure, barometers, which measure atmospheric pressure, and altimeters, which measure the altitude of an object above a fixed level. Other sensors include liquid flow sensors, which measure flow rates of liquids, gas flow sensors, which measures velocity, direction, and the flow rate of a gas, and accelerometers, which measure acceleration and deceleration. Electrical sensors are sensors that measure changes in resistance, current voltage, or electrical energy. Examples of electrical sensors are ohmmeters, which measure resistance, the voltmeter, which measures voltage, the governometer and ammeter, which measure current, and the watt ohmmeter, which measures the amount of electrical energy supplied to and used by a residence or a business. Shown here is a governometer, a special type of ammeter which is used to sense and measure the amount of current flowing through a wire. In a governometer, current flows through a coil, the red wire wound around a metal cylinder. This current creates a magnetic field around the coil. Permanent magnets surround the coil. The interaction of these two magnetic fields causes the coil and cylinder combination to pivot around its central axis. The amount and direction of the pivot move the needle at the readout left or right, indicating the level of current and its polarity, negative or positive respectively. This device uses two energy conversions to sense and quantify an electric current. These energy conversions are electrical to magnetic and magnetic to mechanical rotation. Chemical sensors detect the presence of certain chemicals or classes of chemicals and quantify the amount and or type of chemical detected. For example, an oxygen sensor measures the percentage of oxygen in a gas or liquid being analyzed. A carbon dioxide sensor detects the presence of CO2. The chemical sensors that detect a specific gas such as CO2, arsenic, or ammonia. However, microtechnology has enabled the ability to fabricate micro-sized sensors that can detect several different gases simultaneously. Chemical sensing has grown rapidly with microtechnology. Just like the macro-sized components, MEMS chemical sensors can detect a wide variety of different gases, but because of their size, they can go places that macro-sized sensors can't really go. MEMS sensors can also be incorporated into objects for continuous sensing of a gas or selection of gases. MEMS chemical sensors have numerous medical, industrial, and commercial applications, such as biohazard detection, quality control in food processing, and medical diagnosis. Such devices are sometimes referred to as e-nose or electric nose. Optical sensors detect light of a specific wavelength or light within a range of wavelengths. The manner in which the light is detected depends upon the type of optical sensor. For example, the photocells seen in the pictures use photovoltaic cells to convert light energy directly into electricity. The photocells on the international space cells are double-sided in order to maximize the amount of light detected. The electricity generated supplies the electricity for all operations aboard the station. Photodetectors range from simple resistive photocells to photodiodes and transistors. The detector must be part of a switching or amplification circuit. By themselves, they can carry only small amounts of current. They are used to control elevator door and garage doors, assembly line part counters, and safety systems. Light-sensitive semiconductor materials have been used in a variety of electronic components. Miniature proximity detectors use light to sense when objects are nearby. They contain an LED source and a detector to measure reflected light. Measuring a few millimeters on a side, they are small enough to be used in small electronic appliances and cell phones.
They have a range of a few inches useful for determining the alignment of paper in a copier, for example, the presence of your hand, or if a laptop case is open or closed. Infrared sensors are used in situations where visible light would be inconvenient or counterproductive. They can be used to tell if someone's in a room by the heat given off by a person's body. As we saw previously, infrared sensors are being used to measure body temperature by measuring the amount of black body radiation. Other types of sensors include acoustic sensors such as the acoustic wave sensors which measure the wave velocity in an environment to detect the chemical species present and seismometers which measure seismic waves. There are also motion sensors such as accelerometers and gyroscopes which detect motion, acceleration, rotation and vibration. Speedometers which measure speed Geiger counters, which detect atomic radiation, and biological sensors, which can sense and measure specific biological molecules in the human body. Transducers and sensors can be found in both the macro and micro scales. For most macro sensors, there is an equivalent micro sensor that can perform the same function or functions more efficiently and, in many cases, for lower production costs. The images seen here show a macro-sized pressure sensor on the left and its equivalent on the right. The pressure sensor on the left is a capacitor manometer. Underneath the electronics board that you can see is a diaphragm and reference chamber that are used to measure changes in pressure. The right image shows the micro diaphragm and electronic sensing circuit. Both components perform the same function, however, their size difference is dramatic. You can see this in the left image. The green circle is around a MAMS pressure sensor, which you can see is extremely small in comparison. Other such comparisons can be found with pumps, inertial sensors, chemical sensors, photo sensors, and many, many more. Here are some questions for you. Is it possible for a device to be defined as both a sensor and a transducer? Can you think of an example? As we have said many times before, a transducer is a device which converts one form of energy into another. When the output of the transducer is quantified and converted to a readable format, the transducer is called a sensor. Therefore, a sensor is a device that receives and responds to a signal. This signal usually comes from a transducer is some type of energy such as heat, light, motion, or chemical. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to visit the SCME Support Center website for access to educational materials for many microsystems topics.